All right, we're back. We are now on page 44 of Math Analysis. We're in notes five, we're graphing trig stuff. Uh, pretty good deal. Trig graphing is so important. Uh, it just gives you all these insights that if you can't do it, you just miss out on and so valuable. So make sure you're really getting this. Uh, ask the questions when you have them, practice, uh, see that you can do it on your own. Uh, I believe in you. I'm sure you should believe in yourself because this is, uh, this is one of those things I, I, I firmly believe that, that anyone can learn to do this at a very high level. So let's see if we can do this. We have to remember what to fill in. All right, so first we're gonna find the period. So period, Ooh. first we forgot how to write, just, just forgot how to write in, in general. Period, okay. So two pi divided by pi is two. Increment. This is the period divided by four, so that's gonna be two over four or one half. Start, which is where the pattern starts, right? So the starting point for us, uh, we take whatever's in parentheses, set it equal to zero and solve. So it's gonna be pi x minus three pi over five equals zero. So I'm gonna say equals three pi over five, which means that x is three fifths. Ideally, we want to write these with the same denominator, the increment and the start. So uh, let's use 10, I guess. So this is 5 tenths, and this is 6 tenths. And that means that we can put the start in the middle and then just add multiples of the increment over and over again, and it's going to work out fine. Uh, sinusoidal axis, that's going to be y equals 1, because of that 1, that plus 1 at the end. Or it could have been 1 minus 3, blah, blah, blah then that one at the beginning would be your sinusoidal axis. Maximum. So we're gonna start at one and we can add three to get four because the amplitude is three. The value of A is negative three, which means we're reflecting our pattern and the amplitude is three. Um, so the amplitude is the magnitude of that and that would be three. So here we're gonna be at one and we go down three, it's gonna be negative two. So four to negative two. I feel like that has come up on almost every one, except I, all but one, I think, actually, so far, uh, had been some combination of four and two and a plus and a minus. Uh, so I pretty much know that it's gonna work if I put four here, and then two, and then zero, and then negative two. All right, then we go straight across. And I gotta move that up, because that's not good enough. Get up. Okay. And then start goes in the middle. So the middle, I'm going to say in this case, uh, it's really hard because I'm zooming. Uh, I'm going to say here, six tenths. Okay. And then we add, we go two increments and no, two boxes and then an increment. Two boxes per increment, not two increments per box. That's crazy talk. So this will be. 11 tenths, and then, so we just keep adding five. So 16 tenths, 21 tenths, 26 tenths. And so that I've gone one, two, three, four increments. So that should be one period. 26 minus six is 20 over 10 is two. And we got that the period was two, so we got it. Um, that's, that's a check that you can and probably should always do. Um, cause why not? It's like a free check and you can see how things went. Negative four. Sometimes when I go into the negatives, I get them wrong for some reason. I don't really know why. Okay. So this, if we give it a check, uh, we started at, that's one, two, three, four increments. And then six minus negative 14 is 20 divided by 10 is two. So that one's in the right place. Uh, but my spacing is off because I get an extra one over here, I guess, that I didn't get on the other side, I think. I don't remember getting an extra one. Yeah, so a little bit off center, but you know, that's okay. So my starting point is going to be uh, here, which like, it, it gets hard to keep track of a starting point because you end up putting a lot of stuff on. So I'm, the highlighter idea is not bad. I don't do that in the real world, but uh, here, I think it's not a bad idea. So sinusoidal axis at one, and then I'm gonna dot, dot that in. But I just use a guide as I do these, because why not? 
really adopted uh, really adopted this iPad writing lifestyle, which is kind of weird. You know, sometimes when you're forced to make a transition into certain things, like you find out that not all bad. And this is one of the one of the few things out of this. Uh, I'm doing all these during quarantine, a little self quarantine, social distancing. Uh, this is one of the things that I found that I really enjoy, like writing. I'm using an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil 2, I guess. Um, and it works really well. Like I think it could definitely be a, a replacement for paper and pencil at this point. I don't know about a laptop replacement. I do a lot of stuff on my laptop, but like uh, paper and pencil, I don't know if I'll ever use those again. All right, so what's our pattern gonna be? It's a negative cosine. So negative cosines start at minimum intercept, maximum intercept, minimum. So you gotta know that. If you don't know those, you're, you're gonna be in trouble. But if you know them, you're pretty good to go. Here, 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 there. And we can get one more, so we should. Here, here. And if you're doing it, and like, it'll look wrong when you get it wrong. Um, so you know that you have to like go back and fix it. So you find yourself like, why is this maximum just so much higher? Uh, and periodic functions are really nice like that. I mean, as long as you're not periodic, as long as you're not periodically making the exact same mistake, uh, you'll notice that things are a bit off. This, and I guess like if you wanted to keep going, you'd have to do this, you'd have to do that. That's if you want to keep going. All right, so what goes in this mystery box here? We've been putting the intercepts that we see, but I'm just going to generalize. So, well, no, I'll show two that I know. So the first one I see is 1 tenth, and then the next one is 11 tenths. So I'm going to say it's x equals 1 tenth plus 10 tenths, which is 1, which is half of the period. And the intercept should happen every half period. Um, just look at the pattern, right? So it's uh, how far apart are they? They are exactly two increments apart. Two incre if the period is four increments, two increments is half the period. So this all kind of makes sense. And then n, n is an element of the integers. We get that. Pretty good. So that's a good graph. Uh, I've been kind of like illustrating that there are two good equations, well, three good equations that we can solve. We just solved one of them. Um, but actually, it looks like below we're going to be asked to solve all of them anyway. So let's see if we can. So solve uh, f of x equals 1. So f of x equals 1 is actually here. And that we already did, right? That was this. So I'm actually just going to copy that down. 1 tenth plus, I'm going to say 1 tenth plus, so x equals 1 tenth. I'm going to simplify 10 over 10 to 1. So I'm just going to say plus n, where n is an element of the integers. Let me like highlight this in the same color so it's a little clearer what's happening visually. All right, equals 4. So equals 4 is this one, the top, the maximum. So I just need one of them. So I'm going to go with negative 4 tenths because it happens there. I could go with 16 tenths. I could also go with uh, whatever that up, one of them is there negative 24 tenths, any, any of them that work. You just need one that works. So x equals negative 4 tenths plus the actual period, because you get one per period. So 2, n, n is an element of the integers. And then this last one is the minimum. So visually, that's what we're doing. Uh, I need one of them. So the starting point is actually a minimum. So I'm going to use that, x equals six tenths or three fifths, and then plus the period because you get one per period. So two times n, n, oh my gosh, is an element of the integers. The integer thing is really hard to draw in here. And we got this other type of question. So for how many, val okay, so we got to count. For how many values of x between negative seven fifths and 13 fifths does the line y equals one minus five thirds x intersect the graph. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, I think, I'm gonna try to do this. I'm gonna try to take this graph and add it up there. 
1 minus 5 thirds x. So I'm going to try that. 1 minus 5 thirds x. 1 minus 5 thirds x. So when x is 0, I get 1. And then when, but when x is 0, I don't even have that on here. So I'm going to add in a y, a y axis here. And it should be like, so this, it's in between there, right? It's much closer to one tenth than it is negative four tenths. So I'm just gonna like put it in at uh, here, I guess. And kind of go with that. So I need one and then it's down five over three. This problem is terrible, uh, but that's okay. So down five over three, down five. Uh, so let's count that. One, two, three, four, five. And then, so that was like here. One, yep, count it, but don't count it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then I need to go over three. So say it was here, it'd be uh, one, two, three, but it's a little less. So I'm gonna say like here, down five over three, yeah. Uh, and then if I go back, well, that's the wrong color though. I wanted to use this and then this. And then if I go up, if I go back three, I have to go up five, which is definitely going to put me like somewhere. I don't know. Uh, that's one up five would take me to six, which is actually like at the top. And then I don't know, one, two ish, three ish one i'm having i'm struggling okay here we go if it was here it'd be one two three so it's gonna be like a little to the left of that so it was one two three so it's gonna be like here so hopefully that exists long enough it didn't there i think all right so let's do a line basically through those Ooh, tough, tough. No way to know. I'm going to say there's like almost no way to know this. Um, what could we do? So at five, at six, at three fifths, what do I get? Three fifths. I would get y such that x equals three fifths would give me one minus one would give me zero. At three fifths, it's at zero. Three fifths, it's at zero. What? At three fifths, it is at zero. Three fifths is at zero. My graph is so wrong. Uh, maybe so wrong? Let me see. This is one of those things I tell myself that it's probably good for you to see me struggle occasionally, uh, even though it wastes your time. So at three fifths, I should be at zero. What the? I wonder what I did. I wonder if, oh, I know what I did. I counted by ones, but we're not going by ones. Oh, geez. All right, three fifths, I should be at zero. Um, what, what's, what's next? Uh, how about at uh, 16, how about at one tenth? What's one tenth going to give me? y slash x equals such that I should say one tenth is going to give me one minus uh, five thirds one tenth. So that's one minus uh, one sixth. So like one ish. So maybe here. Okay. And then, uh, well, what's my uh -oh, crash? Gotta, gotta do something. Get that out, go back in. Notes, what notes are these? Notes five, this is taking forever. Oh my God, if I lost this, I'm gonna be so sad. Well, I kind of did, um, but not the end of the world, I guess, I don't know. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna plug in the values that I was given and just see what happens. Let's, let's use the interval that was given. I think this is a bad question, basically, is what I'm saying at this point. So, uh, y of negative 7 fifths is 1 minus 5 thirds negative 7 fifths. So that's going to be 1 
plus seven thirds, which is, I don't know, six, 13 thirds, which is like a little more than four. So negative seven fifths is negative 14 tenths. And it's a little more than four. So that's gonna actually be, oh, look at that, my bad line is back. That's interesting. Can I de delete this without deleting? Well, not really. Let's, let's undo that and leave it, but delete this. Um, so here I'm at 13 thirds, which is a little more than four. So, well, it's like a third more than four. So let's go with this. And then uh, at the other, so this has probably made this video really long. So again, I apologize, but nothing I can do other than maybe prepare ahead of time, which I do all of these on the fly. So not gonna happen. It's one minus 13 thirds is negative 10 thirds. Um, okay, negative 10 thirds is like, and where is this? This is 13 fifths, which is 26 tenths. Uh, one, two, three, down a third, like here. Make sure that's right. Negative 10 thirds. Negative 10 thirds. Yeah. All right. Let me draw a line, then we'll just count and call it a day on this. Like this disastrous problem. All right. How many we get? We get, uh, we're looking for solutions. One, two, three. Three solutions. So, what did I do wrong? I think doing a, a like a post mortem on that uh, would be useful. I'm going to say there are three solutions. Terrible problem. Okay, so the thing that I did wrong, which cost me a lot, was I did not think that on the x axis, we're not counting by ones. So when I was counting by ones, that was useless. Uh, on the x-axis, I've counted by, I don't know, five twentieths or something, one, one fourth, basically. Um, so that really cost me when I was trying to draw my line. My line was way too steep. It was a harder problem, though, because um, here you can pretty obviously see there are only three solutions. So maybe not as bad a problem as I was making it out to be. Uh, but, you know, when you do something wrong, you get angry at it, and you like to blame things. At least I do. Um, and so that's what was happening there. But anyway, uh, yeah, so the graph itself, four minutes, I would say, like maximum amount of time. Solving these things, uh, these three here, uh, not very long at all, right? If you did the graph, it's just reading. Uh, this one, if you do it right, shouldn't take you very long. If you do it wrong, you know, take an infinite amount of time. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, I'm going to stop the video here, come back in the next one, do some more. So I will see you there.